So we've reached the end of this uh, term and um, it has been my pleasure to work uh, with you through this health and wellness class. Um, over these past 14, 15 weeks, we have discovered how personal health affects us, how the environment affects us. We've learned how um, individual choices you know, affect us or even choices that are out of our control sometimes can affect our health and our wellness. Uh, this week, as we, you know, we focused on smoking, we focused on addictions, we focused on weight, we focused on exercise, we focused on nutrition. And if there's one lasting thought that I can leave you is that health is very personal. And we have to look at it through this personal lens because no one can do these things for you, but you. So I encourage you to be diligent. I encourage you to be forthcoming. I, I, I challenge you to be a more studious. I challenge you to set goals and objectives for yourself, to look to see how you want to be more physically fit if you are not, to look at how to eat uh, better or how to better menu prepare. All of these things are, are simple, but sometimes complicated concepts that come inside of health and wellness. Uh, we had a very good discussion about COVID-19 and about how COVID-19 affects our personal health and wellness. But I will go back to my original statement where I say that health is personal. COVID-19 is personal. And you'll hear so many different varying thoughts and opinions. But at the end of the day, it is you who must make the best informed decision for you, for your children, for your family. You know, no one else can walk that path for you. No one else can make you walk that path for you. It is solely a choice that you must make for yourself. And so it has been my absolute pleasure just to listen to your discussions, to hear the passion in your voices, to, to see how much time and, and, and effort goes into really having a, a scholarly discussion about health, not just health, but it got personal. And it's very different when you talk about health from a standpoint of not do as I say, not as I do, but this is what I do. And this is why I can say it. And that creates a whole different concept. It creates a whole different avenue of how we even broach and, and talk about subjects. Because at that point, it no longer becomes a I must do or we must do. It becomes a collective hour. And how do we protect our health, our individual health? our community health, our nation's health. So we know that when we look at those numbers and we've studied this, we as a nation are overweight. We suffer from different metabolic diseases. We suffer from different cardiovascular diseases. And this is because of choice. We choose to live a certain way. We want to eat a certain way. And so that sedimentary lifestyle and bad nutritional habit will come back and catch us eventually. And so this is all that we look at. And as we move throughout this semester and we, we go into the days ahead, I want you to be vigilant about your health, to be vigilant about your wellness. And I'm not telling you that because a textbook tells you but because of this one word, phenomenology, looking at someone's lived experiences. And so I lived through having a metabolic disease. I have lived through having COVID and being hospitalized and still not breathing, you know, as well as I should. I've looked at having to lose weight and exercise more. So this is not something that I'm telling you to do because it's good for you. I'm doing it and I'm telling you because I know and see how good it can be.
but everyone will have their own different experience, which makes that word phenomenology so important. All of us live different lives and we all live different experiences. But health is a universal. We all want to be in good health. Wellness is universal. We all desire to be well. And so now it's how do we separate the reality from the fiction? How do we separate the good news from the bad news? Well, unfortunately, you can't. All of these things are kind of intertangled together, and we have to have the right discernment as you read and research and study to see which things are actually good versus those that are not. All of that rolls and plays into how we develop. It all rolls into what makes us who we are. And this is not about uh, groupthink. This is not about uh, having one train of thought that is a do-all, end-all for everything. But it's really understanding how do we place and piece these things together to make some kind of common sense and then make that common sense be transformed into educational opportunity that then transforms into intellectual building, which then moves into community building which then moves into person-to-person interactions. All of these things, it is a tightly woven web. But it's how we define what we want that web to be. And how do we want people to be able to share in this information? So once we're able to diverge ourselves and divulge ourselves into all of this different information. We have it on this neatly uh, placed platter where everything is placed perfectly. And it looks so edible. But some of it might be a little tough. And so we have to look at how do we balance that toughness with the smoothness to make it very palatable for everyone. That is the challenge of health and wellness. That is the challenge of public health. It's the challenge of each and every individual. How do we take that more complex, tough issue and grind it down into something that becomes much more palatable? That is the whole quest of health. And so if there's nothing that I could, you know, infuse upon you this past semester, is that one thought. Your health is what you make it. It's about the decisions that you make, the choices that you make. It is what makes you who you are. Yes. There are environmental factors and other outside outliers that that may come into play. But at the end of the day, we're still able to make those good, informed decisions about how do we get there? What do we have to do to get there? But most importantly, why it is important to be there. We can only be there when we're present. We can only be there when we're in the room. And so today, I urge you to be present, to be in that room, to have those discussions, comfortable and uncomfortable. But the ramifications of not having that meeting could be life-shortening and life-threatening versus life-sustaining and life-supporting. So this is all that we look for in our day-to-day lives, is finding that balance. 
So I hope that uh, we do find that balance in what we do. And so in anything and everything that we do is to be ambassadors for health. One person at a time, one issue at a time. We won't be able to conquer everything. But I know that by working together, we can definitely achieve more.